What's up, everybody? Mark with Cardvox Academy here. And today, I'm just going to be transparent with you. My heart is not in it at all. My heart is not in this at all. Um, you know, almost 400 videos on the channel. And, you know, sometimes you have days where you just like aren't really in the mood to work, but you can usually muster up the excitement. But today, not so much. Um, you know, unfortunately, recently, um, And maybe this is oversharing, but uh, my uh, my wife and I had to put our dog, uh, you know, over 10 years down just two days ago. Um, and it has been a lot harder on me than I thought it would be. Uh, it has been a lot harder on me than I thought it would be. Um, earlier today, my wife took my son over to his grandma's house and I immediately walked in the door and, um, you know, normally... I would call him in to film, sit with me while I filmed a video. And he, <laughs> the first harsh scream he heard, he, he always left. But, um, you know, I called out to him and I was like, oh, you know. And so, uh, yeah, we lost him to cancer. And I just, you know, I'm having trouble wanting to work. <laughs> but um, a couple things. Number one, having been someone who has uh, dealt with some pretty, pretty rough low times. Comparatively, this is not the worst. Um, and I also know that one of the best ways to move past things is to selectively and, uh, healthfully get your butt into gear, at least for myself. So, uh, I'm kind of doing this to help myself feel better. And I wasn't even going to mention anything, but I know that y'all are going to see past it. You're going to see that I'm just not into it. Um, and secondly, uh, YouTube's algorithm, don't give a fuck um, why you take time off. But when you take time off, it hits you hard. Um, so I thought to myself, you know, I was scrolling through all the new releases and I just was finding it so hard to care about any of them. You know, I'm sure they're great. I'm sure they're fine. Um, but I just couldn't bring myself to put on some song and be like, Ooh, that low scream is low, which I don't do that. I always try to bring you as much substance as I can, uh, which is why I talk about vocal technique. So I'm not just, you know, every video pretending I've never heard a fucking breakdown before. <clears throat> you know what I mean? Um, I get it. I get it. We all have to play the game a little bit, but I knew that if I did one of those videos, I wasn't going to bring substance to you because my heart just wasn't vibing uh that kind of music i don't i don't go to less listen to 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 metal really when i am sad or hurting or fearful metal's not where i go metal's usually what i listen to when i'm feeling really good um and so i decided well if i'm gonna work today if you know because i must i need to um you know if i'm gonna work today then i'm going to kind of do it on my own terms and normally when you run any sort of content creation, you generate most of your content based on, you know, what viewers want to see. And I don't think that that's a bad thing. Actually, I think it's a really good thing because, you know, I myself and, and Quiggs, my business partner, we feel very grateful that we get to do this. We feel very thankful. I feel very thankful that I get to for a living for my full time job. I get to give harsh vocal lessons to people. That's what I do. If this is anybody's first video watching me, probably not. Um, that algorithm beast is a fickle one. Um, so we'll see how many people even see this. Um, but you know, I, I, and I think in return, um, as a content creator, I, you know, I could be a cool, like the right thing is for me to give you something that I think you're going to want to see. So sometimes people are like, Oh, you know, well, that guy is only doing stuff that he thinks people will want to watch. And it's like, yeah, <laughs> what do you think my job is? You dumb cabbage. Um, but it's also, you know, uh, it makes me feel good when I, when I anticipate a video that I think y'all want to see and then it does well. And I see a lot of engagement in the comments. I, it makes me feel good. It makes me feel like, Hey, you know, I brought some value to the table here. I brought, uh, you know, maybe some people are going to have a little bit easier time, uh, doing harsh, harsh vocals. Um, but I think today I'm going to back away from that. Um, and I would like to share something with you. Um, this is my favorite band of all time. This is my favorite band of all bands to have ever existed to ever exist. I'm sure. Um, and to, uh, 
there's to me for my own personal tastes, there's no comparison. Um, you know, a lot of people who watch this channel know that I am in love with um, Black Tongue that I love uh, Job for a Cowboy, especially the newer Job for a Cowboy. That Cattle Decapitation is, in my opinion, still probably one of the best two metal bands to ever exist. Um, you know, uh, but um, this band for me, like if all those bands are here, this band pop, skyrocket. Um, I would not be, which is interesting because this is not metal. There's a lot of harsh vocalization. We're still going to talk about technique, um, here because I'm still, you know, I'm not just going to sit here and pout while I listen to music. Uh, that's not worth any of your time. Um, but there's still a lot of vocal technique that we can talk about here, but this is not metal at all. Um, so it's going to be kind of interesting and I hope you all enjoy it. Uh, but the vocalist here, his name is Aaron Weiss and I would not be the vocalist I am, uh, if it were not for for this this individual, uh, for the way that he writes lyrics, for the way that he um, storytells in his voice, for the way that he he articulates um, and he leads very feeling first or so it seems to me. And we're going to talk about that. You know, for me, I actually wrote him out because I, I didn't want to forget my favorite vocalists. If I had to pick of all music, my favorite vocalists would be Aaron Weiss, Sufjan Stevens, Björk, Travis Ryan and Einar Solberg. Um, and I think Aaron Weiss for me is above all the rest. A lot of people don't like this stuff. Um, it's old. This came out, this song I believe was released in 2004. So it's 20 years old. Um, and I'm going to try to do something a little bit different. I'm going to on the bottom here, you know, you can maybe see my mouse cursor. Uh, no, you can't. I'm an idiot. Uh, on the bottom, I'm going to try to sync up the lyrics if I can't find them or I don't have time because I got to edit this tonight. The lyrics won't be there, but I encourage you if the lyrics aren't there to um, read along with them because that's that's the beauty of um, that's the beauty of this band is underneath all the beautiful music that they make are lyrics that actually matter, um, you know, and I think uh, just for a small hot take, I think that that is generally metal's biggest weakness. I love metal. I write metal. I'm in a metal band. I talk about metal. I teach metal. Um, but I don't know how anybody feels emotionally moved to any of the lyrics ever. Um, you know, you'll hear lyrics like, you know, I will tear you down and take you to the abyss. And it's like, cool. Or it's like, um, you know, I don't know. This shouldn't be a this shouldn't be a hot take video. I want to I want to share something meaningful with you and nobody wants to hear my hot takes. So uh, this is a song called Me Without You. The song is called The Soviet and it's from an amazing album called Catch for Us the Foxes. Uh, and this is one of the main albums that shaped me as the vocalist I am today. So let's talk about it.
So this is actually the first place I want to stop it. Um, having heard this song probably over a thousand times, I know exactly what I want to talk about. So one thing I really like about uh, Aaron's voice is that it sounds uh, it sounds technique-less. Um, now, sometimes when I talk about uh, these more alternative voices, um, I say things like that and people get all bent out of the shape, out of shape in comments. And if you can't understand that, I think this man is the pinnacle of vocal perfection. And you hear me say his voice sounds technique-less and you get mad in the comments. I don't know what you need to do introspectively, but figure yourself out. Um, but it sounds technique-less, right? It sounds like he simply is standing at the microphone in pain. Um, doing nothing more than than uh, letting everything sort of explode out of his chest. But, you know, as vocalists here and and especially as metal vocalists, too, because one thing that I think we we as metal vocalists sometimes forget is that our style, while it may sound unique. Well, it does. You know, all the <laughs> sounds that we make, they sound unique and certainly their production is unique. They play by a lot of the same rules that our vocal, uh, that our normal vocals, our singing vocals and our speaking voices follow. And as such, we can learn a lot from other genres. One thing I think is really cool is that a lot of metal vocalists now are uh, much more open than they were in like the 90s to like hip hop and rap. And uh, like you can learn so much about breath support and lyrics um, from those genres. But what can we learn here? Well, there are a couple things that I think are the most fascinating. First and foremost, you know, if you listen to his voice and you think about how much I've talked about this on the channel, you're not going to be surprised about the first thing that I say. His voice is extremely bright and forward, right? He's not down here. He's not saying God is love and love is real, but the dead are dancing with the dead. He says God is love and love is real, but the dead are dancing with the dead and whatever's charming disappears while all things lovely only hurt my head. Now, understandably, um, without the grit and without the distortion, um, it sounds kind of terrible. <laughs> like what I just did sounds a little pretentious. Sounds like you're a, you know, sophomore in college and you went to the poetry reading um, and all the kids who are a bit overconfident are reading with all the fervor they can and all the poet kids who are really good. Uh, they're not reading any of their poetry. That's what it sounds like when I do it right here. Um, but the introduction of the distortion, the introduction of the the breaking and the cracking of the voice uh, is what really makes this work, in my opinion. Um, I have, and no, I will not show you, uh, tried to replicate these. This was years ago. And even I sounded terrible, even with the distortion. And I think that's because vocalizations with our true voice underneath them tend to uh, have less that we can hide behind, right? One thing, and again, this is going to sound like a jab at harsh vocals, and it's not. Um, if you watch, and by harsh vocals, I mean like heavily distorted <coughs> type of stuff. Um, if you watch enough of my channel, you know that I, I hold harsh vocals, deathcore, death metal vocals in extremely high esteem. Um, but they, they can be very easy to hide behind. Um, because what sells deathcore is technique, not really emotion. You know what I mean? Um, and that's not a bad thing. You know, that's just the purpose of the dish, Right. But when you have your 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 true folds touching underneath your distortion mechanism, right? Um, there's less that you can hide behind, and you really have to have a good sell. You almost have to be a good actor, in some degrees, um, and that can be difficult to do. And unfortunately, it can be a very difficult thing to teach because how do you teach somebody to genuinely sound like their emotionally true selves? I can teach you where to place your distortion. I can teach you um, how to feel vibration in your nose. I can teach you you know, how to be much more conscious of your tongue and its position. I can teach you how to do a tunnel throat, but how can I teach you to actually sound like you're in pain? It's possible. It's coachable. I've done it, but it's much harder. It's much harder um, than anything else. And I think that that's the reason why me without you resonated. They've, they've since ended as far as I know um, their, their, this project. Um, and I think that's what resonates with a lot of people. You know, in the opening lines here, we have, uh, and I pulled them up because as much as I love this song, I don't have the lyrics memorized because I've got the brain of a fucking goldfish. Um, but, you know, we have, if we listen to this, and I'm not going to play it again because I don't want to take too much of your time, but if we listen to this, we can hear moments where there's a little bit of cry, there's a little bit of sadness, there's a little bit of anguish in his voice. Like when he says God is love, God is love and love is real, which, by the way, whether or not this is a Christian band has always been up for debate. Um, 
I don't care now, nor have I ever cared. Um, I love music if it's heavily satanic, if it's Christian, I don't care. If it's good music and it sounds good and it's not like inherently hateful, then I'm into it, right? Um, but the way he screams God is love and love is real, it is not a statement, it is a question. Um, and man, how do you do that? Like, how do you, how do you, how do you, while vocalizing, insinuate the question mark? That's the stuff that blows my mind about this guy. The insinuation of the question mark. Because when we have questions in in English, and this is probably common in other languages too, um, we tend to go up. Have you eaten today? How are you? What's your name? Mm. But he screams, God is love and love is real. Real. Down. Into the chest. Not chest voice, but you can hear the heartbreak. And I mean... One thing I I love about his lyrics is he very rarely writes about what he is saying. He writes around about the thing that's next to it. And so there's always a bit of mystery of what he's saying. Like when he says, and I gather stones from field like per pearls of water on my fingers ends. And I carefully wrap them up in boxes safe from windows from things that break. It's hard to think that that's not a reference to David and Goliath where he gathered the stone, the river stones. Right. Um, and yet he takes that analogy somewhere else entirely. But before I just talk unendingly because this is my favorite band ever my favorite thing here is the delivery of the line and we will go back maybe and listen to this although that's going to make it a bit of an editing nightmare but i'll figure it out um i'm going to edit this video myself i'm sure that ludo my normal editor would do it on a moment's notice because he's an absolute gem but i'm not going to put him through that he lives in the netherlands so he's probably sleeping right now um but um, the lines besides how else could I confess when I looked down like if to pray while I was looking down her dress good God the way he screams good God is the like you can hear that he is disappointed in himself you can hear it's like he's screaming it out from a cage because he feels like he cannot change um, and I have other than other than maybe Sufjan Stevens other than maybe Sufjan Stevens, I've never I've never heard anybody come close to saying so much with just the tone of their voice. Let's go back. Let's 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 find it. I think if I go back to one minute and twenty seconds, we'll find it. Let me push play here. How do you write like that? How the hell do you write like that? Like, I'm going to be transparent. I don't really know what he's talking about here. And I haven't known for such a long time. And I'm sure that there's a lyric explanation out there, but I kind of don't want to look it up because the imagery, because I almost feel like even though I don't know exactly what he's saying, I understand what he means. Right. And, and I think a good example of this, obviously right here, his lyrics are in English, but you know, and this is something that I think metal vocals have a strength in, actually, that uh, that I'm going to talk about. And I did a video, my only ever video essay, which I think is pretty good. 
um, is about, oh, I can't understand what they're saying. And again, obviously he's screaming in English here. So um, this won't be the perfect analogy, but it's very easy to tell what someone means, even if you aren't necessarily sure what they're saying. And that's kind of why I think sometimes lyrics can fall flat because like, you know, uh, this is something that you run into with a lot of like, you know, uh, I will say fantasy themed metal, you know, we got on the ship and we sailed the shores and we stole their gold. Hurrah. I stabbed him in the chest to die. And now we're going to Valhalla. Like I get it right. I understand what you're telling me. Um, but at the same time, some of the most, some of the most emotionally visceral experiences can be when you are in another country and everybody's speaking a language that you don't speak, but you're pretty sure you, you messed up. You did a little social faux pas. I remember being on a bus in Italy and, you know, I, I've never grown up in a very compact city. I grew up in Phoenix, which is one of the biggest cities of the United States. But it was a it, Phoenix is not like New York and it's nothing like Rome. Right. Those when I think of really compact cities, I think of New York. I think of Rome because I've been there. And so I just didn't know the etiquette. And I got on the bus and I was carrying my big travel pack and I didn't take it off and put it at my feet. I left it on and people didn't yell at me, but I could tell what I could tell by the I don't I don't speak Italian. OK, I can get I can buy two bus tickets. Due biglietti per autobus per favore. It's all I got. Um, and I could tell by what they were saying. I couldn't understand a word, but I knew that they were all saying, like, look at this fuck. Um, God damn, he's ruining everything. And I was like, I don't know. And so to bring that back. That is something that I love about these lyrics. <clears throat> you get the idea um, that there is something, maybe temptation, maybe um, maybe weakness, maybe doubt. Um, you know, and I kind of get that from uh, so turn your ears, musicians, to silence because they only come out when it's quiet, right? Like, how often do we distract ourselves so that when it's silent, all those thoughts that we don't like don't come, you know, come rushing, or we avoid them coming rushing to our heads. Um, and again, there's just nothing but um, just incredible pain. And, and, and I love how there's one line where he gets aggressive. This whole song is, is very heavy with, uh, with sadness, with despair, right? But uh, when he says, fall down, stay down, I don't need this. You know, it's interesting because it says, my doubts, my loves. But in my head, it sounds like, fall down, stay down, I don't need this. Um, and I think that I think that that's what he's saying, um, but it's very very impactful. Now, because this is a vocal technique channel, let's talk about how we can generate these sounds. Right. One thing that you're going to run into is that oftentimes outside of uh, deathcore and death metal, people aren't quite sure how to quantify um, or how to talk about harsh vocalization. And the main reason for this is that they don't fall into the neat little containers that we have created. And in fact, I think those neat little containers that we use to speak about harsh vocalization are a bit flawed. Um, and we emotionally charge them a bit too much. I think a good example of this is the term fry scream. Um, you can find tutorials that talk about fry screams and they're great tutorials. Like a buddy of mine sent me a website um, and he was like, Hey, this is currently considered the, like the gold standard. This is my business partner, actually the gold standard of fry screams. What do you think? And I went through and I looked at it and I was like, this is some solid material. Like, this is great. I don't disagree with everything here, except that it kind of was implying that this was the only fry scream. Right. And then sometimes you'll see, other uh other tutorials where they're doing something entirely different right they're doing like the quieter based on the uh, blah, blah, um sound for fry screams um and the two don't tend to like each other very much and this is just kind of a kind of a thing i find interesting uh because like why can't they both be or why do they both have to be right? Can we just call one not fry and one fry or can we just call them both fry and be done with it? And the the embarrassment that I feel when when one side is like so the one that tends to be more of like a mashuga, uh, more of like a Devin Townsend like fry, like based on that more like ha, 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 like there's a little bit more voice. They'll tend to be like because they're trying to sell you lessons. They'll tend to be like, you don't want to be stuck with that disappointing creaky sound. And then the side that's more like the no, no, uh, like the toneless, quieter fry, they'll tend to be like, 
you don't you don't want you want to sound like a monster in a cave you want to sound like a demon not like some generic butt rocker and i'm like oh you guys need to shut up like let people enjoy things right um and so coming out of this the main thing that people would wonder and the main sometimes what i get asked is um about bands like this is well is that a false chord scream or is it a fry scream and i think that that introduces kind of a flawed line of thinking when we are working with harsh vocalization or i should say when we're talking about harsh vo harsh vocalization outside of the introductory level now it is true that when i teach people uh harsh vocals we generally start with false chord or fry right you know we'll start with like uh, e, I, o, uh, um which we have a course for because i'm working and i have to plug our products and they are good people do like them i am not in a salesman mood right now but Got to keep the lights on. And it is true that the False Chord Fundamentals course has been a success for a lot of people. So I don't know. Check it out if you want. Um, or, you know, we're doing the fry thing. We're starting, you know, and this isn't where these sounds stay. I have to I have to really emphasize this is not where these sounds stay. Right. Or we're doing the hello, 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 like we're doing those types of sounds. Right. But those sounds are like baseline ingredients, right? So when you hear vocalists, vocalists like Aaron Weiss or, oh, geez, why am I blanking on all the metal names? Phil Bozeman, uh, Travis Ryan, Chaney Crab, um, Johnny Tardulo. Oftentimes when we talk about these vocalists, pointing at them and saying that's a false chord vocalist is like pointing at a cake and being like, that's eggs. It's like, well, it's got eggs in it but it's, it's not eggs subjective objectively right so <clears throat> this long-winded thing what am i trying to tell you well i'm trying to tell you this sometimes it's best to approach sounds down the road with what's easiest for you here and you connect the dots as you go right you could find your way to this aaron yc sound um if you do mostly fry sounds or if you do mostly false chord sounds, because when you get to the end, if you focus on concepts such as vocal placement, if you focus on concepts such as uh, relaxation, opening the top of the throat or using twang to twang to slightly uh, narrow the narrow the top of the larynx or, you know, projection, well, not or and, you know, proper projection, almost even belting. Right. Your body is going to, if you move slow and you build these concepts on top of each other, your body is going to kind of move these things into place and you're going to sound like yourself doing cool sounds. Now, because I primarily do false chord based sounds, I would follow, I would approach this with a false chord noise, right? And the funny thing about it is this sound is very similar to uh, sounds that you would hear in a lot of like black metal, both atmospheric and more like traditional true cult black metal. So everything from like Alcest to, oh gosh, maybe like um, older Gorgoroth. Maybe it's been a while since I listened to pre-Gaul Gorgoroth. But anyway, what I would do is I would start here. Uh, uh, now there's no trick to that. Uh, uh, and then I would probably say one of the opening lines, just like I did here, you know? Hey! God is love and love is real, but the dead are dancing with the dead, right? Cool, great, got that. Now, this is something you would do slowly, but now I'm here. Uh, a, a, false chord sound. A, God is love and love is real, but the dead are dancing with the dead. I'm Batman, where's the girl? I'm not the one wearing hockey pants. Right now, if you're paying attention, you might have have a thought. You might you might be thinking, well, Mark, that's interesting because what you were doing before, God is love and love is real. That sounds like almost like a mix, right? You're almost like you're lifting your register. Like maybe you're getting close to that, like mix range, not quite head voice, but the false chord sound that you made sounds very chesty. Uh, 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 right. Well, this is exactly it. If you know how to reach these higher spaces of your voice while keeping a, a relaxed throat, hey, oh, 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 you can then maneuver your false chord through those places. Hey, 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 h
God is love and love is real, but the dead are dancing with the dead. And even I don't sound as genuine as Aaron did. And I think that that's probably because Aaron never sat down and said, hmm, I am a false chord vocalist, so I should probably do this this way. You know what I'm saying? Even I'm sort of stuck in technique a little bit. Um, but that's one way that you can go about getting these uh, harsher sounds. And, um, you know, you can do a lot of cool music that way. And despite my slightly cynical old man shakes fist at cloud kind of vibe here, um, you know, a lot of music that's more genre defined is awesome. Um, so like, don't worry if you don't sound as genuine as Aaron does. I don't think anyone does. <laughs> that's kind of why I think he's so good. Um, but uh, yeah, this is uh, one of my favorite songs by uh, Me Without You, the Soviet. Uh, this band, this band really defined me as a vocalist a lot for a long time. Um, you know, most bands I love, I've only ever seen once. But for many years, Me Without You came through Phoenix every like June. And I was there. I didn't have to. I didn't care if I had to skip school. Sorry, mom, if you're watching this. I don't know if you know that. Um, I don't care. Mm. That was a long time ago. Um, that would have been like 19 years ago. Um, 15. It doesn't matter. Uh, it, whatever I had to do to be there, I was there. Um, and they were some of the best, best, we most weird experiences of my life. Because like you got to understand, this was like 2004. Um, a lot of the stuff that eventually became like really embarrassing hipster stereotypes weren't hipster stereotypes yet. So when they came out like, with like some sailor attire and accordions and you know had like bouquets of flowers i'd never seen that before a lot of people had never seen that before i'm not saying me without you invented it um but uh you know it was kind of new right and those things were were fresh and interesting i remember i saw a band come up and they played an entire set almost almost entirely on um kids musical toys and it sounded awesome it was so cool i can't remember which band that was they had like 15 members all crammed onto a small stage and it was a very interesting experience in my life and you know the funny thing um i remember those shows much more than i remember any metal show um i've been to some great metal shows and those metal shows were very impactful but i think that if i had not grown up and sort of been forced because I grew up in a kind of conservative household, um, not necessarily like politically, but like religiously, if that makes any sense. And so like we had to hide a lot of our metal music, like our parents were OK with us listening to this because there were enough like Bible references to where it was probably OK, um, you know, but like um, my sister had a cattle decapitation album and like we would hide the stuff between the mattress and the bed and the box spring. Um, you know, and if we wanted to watch Austin Powers, we had to hide the DVD somewhere. Um, and so I was kind of forced. It wasn't like I was like, oh, I'm going to look outside of metal. I just didn't really have a choice. Um, and I think that if I had only listened to metal and kind of existed in that silo, I think today, um, you know, I still have a lot to learn and I don't want to sound like I'm pumping my own tires. Um, I still have a lot to learn, but I, I think I would be pretty mediocre, um, you know, versus doing what I do now. Uh, in Kardashev on Metal Blade, I think I'd be pretty mediocre. And so I don't really know where I'm going with this. I'm just rambling because I am in this house by myself and the living room is quite empty and the dog bed has nobody in it. And the backyard is not going to have the tippy tap of dog claws or the little boofs as a bird lands in his yard. Damn it. Get out of my yard. He used to chase uh, lizards around the back and so i'm stalling because i don't want to go hang out there in that very empty living room but that's okay i have a lot of student emails to catch up on so i think i'm going to do that instead um but if you enjoyed this please uh like share subscribe all that stupid stuff we youtubers have to say um and despite my cynical attitude today um i really do want to express i i I love doing these videos, even though it can be very stressful. And I am fine with the fact that most of the videos I make are videos that I think people will want to watch because I really enjoy um, giving back because an opportunity was given to me, you know. 
um, I was lucky enough to be able to quit my job. I was lucky enough um, to, you know, have a bunch of students and it's because a lot of people had faith in me and they were like, we're going to give this guy a shot. So I feel good about the fact that most of the time I'm saying, what do they want to watch? What do they want to see? Because for me, it's kind of like I'm, I'm giving something back to you guys. But uh, it, it was nice, you know, showing you something that I love um, and showing you something uh, that I think is beautiful. And in fact, I, I won't have enough time to make a second video. Uh, and it's too much of an algorithm risk <laughs> to <laughs> to do uh, that. But my favorite meta, you should check this band, this project out. Seriously, I say band, but it's just one person. Her name is Erin. Uh, I think uh, I just found I just found uh, them. But you should check out if you're into like really experimental sounding black metal, you should check out a project called Genital Shame. Some of the most amazing, beautiful, phenomenal, cannot even express how beautiful it is uh stuff so that's two bands me without you and general shame check them out many thanks much love i'm out